Hi, and congratulations on reaching week seven in our Prophets course. This week is entitled Interpreting Apocalyptic Prophecy. So, um, well, let's just jump right into it. Hang on a second, and there we go. So this week we're looking at prophetic literature that is also apocalyptic by nature. Um, we have four goals to engage in theological reflection on the relationship between eschatology and ethics in the prophetic or ap apocalyptic corpus. Two, to articulate an understanding of apocalyptic literature and its significance for the interpretation specifically of Daniel, portions of the Old, T, uh, Old Testament prophetic corpus that are apocalyptic, and then finally, um, at least a taste of jumping forward into Revelation. Third, to exegete an apocalyptic passage from Daniel, uh, and then fourth, to defend a position on the correct interpretation of like the Son of Man in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. And that's our primary text that we're going to work with. You have a, a long essay today or this week, and then you actually have two different discussion posts. Uh, so for Assignment 7-1, Interpreting Apocalyptic Genre, this is an essay, and by essay that means to me that you should have an introduction with a thesis statement, multiple paragraphs of evidence in your body, and then finally a conclusion that includes uh, not only personal reflection and summary, but application. Um, so for the assignment in, in the reading by Sandy this week, he compares the apocalyptic visions of the book of Daniel with similar visions in Revelation. He summarizes how one should interpret the genre as apocalyptic paints expressionistic pictures. Interpreters should stand back and look at the picture. What is the overall effect and what did the artist seek to convey? But be careful not to stand too close. The artist's intent cannot be understood if viewers stand uh, close enough to see individual brushstrokes. Reading apocalyptic literature then is best done from a distance. The message can easily be missed if the strokes of the painter's brush are scrutinized individually. Consequently, we will not understand the parts of the story until we have read the last page. So the idea here that, uh, as you read in, in Sandy, when he wrote, um, you have to stand back. You can't look at every single word and interpret it literally, according to Sandy, uh, and come up with what the biblical author intended. You need to look at artistically what's going on in the passage, taking a larger section uh, and looking at what might be happening from a poetic position and not just what is happening literally. All right, so going on to the assignment, much of popular eschatology today operates contrary to this. Many influential pastors and biblical scholars support quite literal interpretation of futuristic apocalyptic passages in Daniel and in the New Testament in Revelation. In a four-page position paper, answer the following questions. Do you agree with Sandy's conclusions about how to interpret apocalyptic passages about the future? So in this paper, you, your, your primary goal is to um, write about your arguable position for how to interpret apocalyptic passages in the Old Testament. Is Sandy right or is Sandy wrong? So you should be interacting with outside scholars and comparing them with your own opinions on Sandy. Uh, so positive or negatively critique Sandy's method and based upon your position, assess popular eschatology today, i.e. the Left Behind series. And what is a faithful and or helpful approach <laughs> in your eyes towards applying apocalyptic in the Christian life? So as you see all four of those, you're going to use Sandy as a foil, 
uh, and outside research to either agree with Sandy or disagree with Sandy, presenting your own position and then taking it into a modern application um, on whether the, the approach in your eyes uh, or how in your eyes should we identify and interpret apocalyptic literature in our own churches. Some helpful hints um, as I read and as I'm going to grade the, the assignment. Be sure to engage with the reading. Second, the goal is to describe your methodology for the interpretation of Old Testament apocalyptic literature, and your inter interpretation needs to be well-founded in biblical evidence and outside research. Uh, your introduction should uh, state your thesis at the end of the paragraph. So I should be able to look to the last sentence of your introduction and see your thesis for the paper. And then finally, your conclusion should add personal reflection and summarize your findings. So that's our, uh, our first paper, and it's a long paper, and I'm going to put a lot of, uh, uh, I'm going to expect a, lo a lot of effort, uh, and we'll grade that uh, based upon whether or not you've really done research and come up with a solid position, either for or against Sandy. I don't care which side of the argument, I just want to make sure that you make an argument. Um, so, two discussion posts. Uh, not only do you need to um, put up two posts this week, but you also need to then do interaction with each of the discussions. Um, so, for 7-1, we have two discussion questions this week. Uh, summarize and discuss the positions you took in assignment 7-1. Now, that means that you're going to have to get a quick start on, on the week in order to have already formulated your argument uh, in your paper to do discussion 7-1. In your interaction with other students, try to sharpen one another's positions through critique and asking good questions. For discussion 7-2, um, we're looking at the, the phrase, one like a son of man in Daniel 7.13, which is often uh, used to describe Jesus's divinity. Um, so in looking backward to that passage, in looking at the phrase, who or what does it refer to? And then Dearman introduces the topic by stating the term son of man is not a title, but is developed in intertestamental Judaism, looking at first Enoch, second Edris, and then early Christianity. He is referred to as like a son of man, not as the son of man. Uh, there seems to be no assumption of a title in that phrase. So read that again carefully. He is referred to as like a son of man, not as the son of man. There seems to be no assumption of a title in the phrase. And that's from Dearman, uh, Religion and Culture in Ancient Israel. So you are to summarize and discuss at least two possible reference of the phrase, like a son of man, and give reasons for and against each possible reference. Uh, do some independent research before posting and refer to these sources in your post. With your two peer interactions, discuss how a particular view might change the message of Daniel 7. So essentially, you need to uh, do research on what son of man means in the Bible and then you need to use your interpretation skills that you've gained throughout all of your courses to identify when Daniel says one like a son of man, what is he meaning? Is he in fact arguing that it's a title or is he not? So do your best exegetical work and uh, hermeneutical work uh, to determine how we as Christians should understand Daniel 7.13. Uh, and that's your second discussion post, um, and that's it for this week. So, uh, last thoughts, call me or email me with questions. Uh, if you are confused about something, email me as quickly as you can in the week. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I do check my email multiple times a day. 
uh, and we'll get right back to you. So have a great week. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. We're just two weeks away from the end of, of the course, um, and I'll talk to you soon.